Okay. We have, we have. Let me tell you, this one, is a, this one is a matte surface, so this one won't cause you too much problem. This one is a shiny surface, unfortunately. I think so, we're going to be okay. So. Uh, let's try to... I don't know if you want to take these separate before we get into the conversation. Let's take a picture of up. it and then we'll... Because I can sort of do that while we're going. And a little bit more so I can get all of the text. Because then we can zoom in. Okay, good. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> and one more just to make sure. Excellent posters. <clears throat> you know, so. I was very big on visual learning, so I have all sorts of things that have well, you know, if you want to, as we're as we're going through the the interview, if you want to hold things up and present yeah. them to the camera, and um, you know, just kind of keep okay. us going with those and explain right. what they are, I think it would be great. Okay. Well, um, might as well get started. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make this thing work. Why is this voice recording not <clears throat> supposed to do? I want to be in the third folder. Should be like a singer and have hot tea and honey. Yes. Me 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 me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here we are. Okay. So. All right. Well, Simone, it's been fun that you asked me to talk about the beginnings of Title IX in Fairfax County, and of course now is very instrumental in laying the groundwork for the county responding as well as it did, but of course Title IX is a federal law, so when the law passed, the county, the school system had to do what it had to do. Mm -hmm. But before that, um, both now and the Fairfax County Commission for Women had been very instrumental in, as I say, laying the groundwork. The Commission for Women did a study of, of what they called sex bias in the school system, and they found, um, they made 89 recommendations for improvement, mm -hmm. and the 89th one was there should be someone to make sure that it all got done. So, for think how things happened anyway, I ended up uh, being the person that was chosen to do that. And that was about six months before Title IX actually required that every school system have a person. So we were, we had someone interested in Title IX before we were actually required to. So, um, the uh, uh, now, of course, was always kind of in the background. They would make presentations to the school board on subjects and, and that sort of thing. Um, and then various members would be active in their own school communities to kind of prod the principals and the teachers to be doing the right thing. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how uh, I, I came to be doing uh, Title IX work. And it was really great because no one had ever been a Title IX person before, so no one could tell me that what I was doing was not the way it yeah. was done. <laughs> you, could be, you could be the model. I could do yeah. what I wanted and say, well, this is the way it's going to be done. So, oh, well, that's great. So um, we did a lot of teacher training, of course, and we worked in um, curriculum. When I say we, I mean, this was a single person office. I was part of the human relations staff, but it was really, it was just me. I didn't have a staff of my own. And I did a lot of things with um, social studies and um, reviewing curriculum and trying to interject women's history whenever possible. So one time when I was making a presentation to a group of principals about the importance of having women's history in the curriculum, and this one man at the back of the room says, well, he says, I'm not against um, women's history or anything, but you can't teach what didn't happen. And I think, oh, well, I think we have a bit of work to do here. <laughs> yeah. right. So, but, you know, things, things obviously that did changed. march along, and the social studies people were very much in the forefront of, mm -hmm. of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, we had, um, one, of the, one of the things was that we had to make a Title IX information available to anyone who needed it whenever they needed it. So, aha, a poster. So then I'm thinking, well, all right, you know, posters are posters, but we've got to have something that's going to explain this so that children would understand. 
Okay. Sure, because their world is the thing that's going to change. Right now. Um, I don't know if this will show on your on your video, but maybe you a can get a close-up of it we later. We have a picture. Yeah. yeah. But the idea was that every child could understand trying to run a race and that if you had a ball and chain behind your leg, you weren't going to be able to run very well and it's not fair. Mm -hmm. And children have a very strong sense of Fairness. fair. That's mm -hmm. an important quality to them. So anyway, our um, elementary schools, all of our elementary schools had these posters mm -hmm. in them for quite a number of years after a while emphasis change and so forth. But anyway, in the beginning, we all, everybody had one of these someplace. And I, I was kind of proud of that yeah, design. Yeah, that is I a really that great that poster. Yeah. So The kids stuff on top and the grown up stuff on the bottom, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. very cool. So, um, then let's see. Oh, I was telling you um, before, um, Fairfax County required all of its teachers to take a human relations course, which was taught by members of our human relations um, uh, department mm -hmm. under the aegis of, of one time um, uh, University of Virginia and then George Mason. And uh, Betty Friedan was um, a guest uh, lecturer at George Mason for a whole semester one year. Mm -hmm. So when I found out about that, I thought, ooh, I think our human relations classes have to encounter Betty Friedan. Mm -hmm. So we invited her. Do you remember approximately what year that was? Well, I can look it up for you. Yeah, I can look it up for you. Anyway, so many letters back and forth and so forth. So finally it's agreed that she's going to come and she has very strict requirements. Um, she does not stand up. She sits down to talk, mm -hmm. and this she's a short person, so mm -hmm. I guess she was tired of being put at podiums where yes. <laughs> she was about like this. She wanted to sit down at a table, and um, that kind of thing. So of course we had some we had some photo ops, and I think you you took a picture of, of one of the, one of these that photographed yeah. pretty well uh, earlier on. Okay. Uh, but that she she did actually make an appearance. Um, however. Of course, you know, she speaks all over the world, and I think she was very tired that day. And so when we drove her to and from the um, to and from the speaking thing, she said, I really don't want to talk to anybody. And so, of course, you know, those of us sitting in the car were just dying to, oh, <laughs> to talk to her or to get some little insight or anything. She says, no, I don't want to talk to anybody. So I've never taken such a long ride into D.C. without saying a word. <laughs> Because it seemed rude to speak, you know, among ourselves, and we weren't including yeah. our guest in the um, in the uh, conversation. But. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, why don't you turn that off for a minute? And okay. Let's see. Wait, I was making sure I pause.